Welcome to the presentation of the one with the braid. You might know her from doing stuff with Jugendtakt and Trains and also Flutter and Matrix. And she's going to give you a small presentation about Flutter and how you can do stuff with it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I intended to do for the next 45 to 50 minutes. Um, yeah, uh, welcome to my talk about uh, performing cross-platform development using Flutter. Um, brief introduction of me. I'm uh, the one with the braid, Jardin uh, mit Flattening in Danish, and I'm a software developer doing Dart and Flutter in healthcare industries, um, especially with a focus on matrix. I don't mean the film, but the chat protocol. Um, apart from that, I'm interested in FreeBSD Linux, uh, RISC uh, computers, and yeah, I started using Flutter back in 2018 when it was publicly released, and yeah, uh, in 20 and 2019 I started doing it uh, professionally, and yeah, that's what I still do. Um, Had er Flutter? Uh, was, what is Flutter? Um, it's a bit complicated. Uh, Flutter is lots. And nothing. Uh, Flutter is a software development kit based on the Dart platform. Dart is a programming language. Um, I will get uh, get you to a quick introduction into Dart uh, a bit later. <coughs> Moreover, Flutter uh, can be the Flutter engine. The engine is what finally renders stuff on mobile devices. Um, Flutter can be the foundation library containing lots of uh, classes and APIs uh, implemented in Dart. Um, Flutter features lots of uh, design-specific UI components for uh, easy software development, and Flutter features uh, lots of dev tools uh, for easy development. So this is everything Flutter can be, and now I'm trying to convince you to use it, in case you don't use it yet. Um, why Dart and Flutter? Flutter compiles to, uh, unlike JavaScript, where we have, I mean, uh, we often compare Flutter with JavaScript since uh, these are the most popular uh, cross-platform mobile frameworks. Um, Flutter compiles, compiles to native code. You get, a, uh, if you compile any Dart, you get a native Linux binary, you get your a native Windows binary, you get your native code on iOS, you get your native code on Android, and you get your JavaScript if you compile it as a web app. Um, yeah, one advantage, of course, from but that's uh, common in uh, any kind of uh, cross-platform development. You have your single code by base that saves you half of the, the number of uh, mobile developers, um, and yeah, uh, also lots of development time. Um, and Flutter is super good at adapting to the platform. If you write a single application, it basically looks same on any device, but it adapts in small. UI enhancements. For example, uh, in order to meet the habits of uh, the platform it runs on, which is, uh, in my opinion, a very good approach. Uh, so, uh, a very e basic example, if you have a, um, an empty uh, app, a material design uh, in, uh, on Android, it would use, uh, it was, uh, uh, uses another app bar than on iOS in order to meet the habits of uh, what users are known from their platforms. Um, and Flutter, and that's the most important thing, it was designed about around development experience. Uh, not mainly user experience, well, that's what the developers uh, at the end do, but uh, the framework itself was developed for uh, developer experience. That means they have a team about, uh, the developers of Flutter, they have a team about caring about developer experience. So asking nothing but the question, how can we make development more intuitive, easier, um, yeah, and that's a very good idea, and it finally uh, helps you out getting rid of uh, legacy development uh, patterns. Brief history of Dart and Flutter. Dart was initially released already in 2011, so it's a pretty modern language. It aimed to replace JavaScript with a type-safe language, and let me just uh, summarize, it absolutely failed. Um, they aimed to, to uh, bundle Dart as language in Chrome, but since, hey, a language supported by a single browser, well, Back in these times, Chrome did not have a market share of 95% yet, uh, so it absolutely failed. But um, some approaches were good, uh, having a typed uh, language, um, but the, it was only semi-ready. Uh, it was the, they forgot many APIs to implement. Um, back in these times, Dart was not uh, did not have a proper type system yet, and so it absolutely failed. So the developers of Flutter, which is Google, looked for a new 
use for this language, which is actually a very nice language, and they found a use, mobile development. That's why they announced uh, Flutter in 2015. And since 2015, uh, back in these times, uh, Flutter was an Android-only uh, SDK uh, aiming to render at 120 frames per second. But um, with uh, times, uh, time going on, Flutter was adding more and more platforms from Android, iOS, then later uh, first uh, preview of Linux desktop, uh, web uh, support, Mac desktop and Windows desktop was released. All of them are, are counted as stable nowadays, though it's discussable in my opinion. Um, and yeah, so nowadays Flutter is a cross-platform development kit, which is really cross-platform. The only common Okay, common is discussable, but the only common uh, platform it does not run on is BSD, which is a pity because I'm a huge FreeBSD fan. Um, yeah, um, I'm not sure whether you are already familiar with Flutter or not, uh, whether you are experts in, Flutters, in Flutter or beginners, so a quick uh, heads up about Flutter. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, we already mentioned Flutter is a UI framework, a cross-platform UI framework uh, aiming to help you uh, creating simple and easy or having a simple and easy way to create mobile platforms. Uh, most important term if you use Flutter is widget. Uh, any UI component is called widget, at least anything the end developers use. Um, and as most uh, UI declarations, whether it may be a programming language or a, a markup language, you have a nested tree. You know it from HTML, you know it from XML, you know it from anything. You have your element nested into elements, having children, and you have a tree structure where you nest your elements. But um, unlike, for example, in HTML, where it's tags, you have widgets in Flutter. And yeah. <coughs> and what makes uh, Flutter pretty special is Flutter ships bo both super basic layouting widgets, doing nothing but layouting, um, up to super high-level widgets for end users, which are kind of, yeah, here's our search bar. Um, for uh, and, uh, Yeah, so you can either use super highly customized uh, development with uh, low-level widgets or super high-level widgets, where you basically drop in a few widgets and you have a final app, or at least a final MVP. Um, so let's sh look at some Flutter code. Um, it's the simplest Flutter application I could find. This is an entire app. It says, hello world in Klingon. Um, <laughs> It's geeks here. I thought Klingon might be liable for here. Yeah, so very important part of Flutter is a run app because that's basically what tells the Flutter engine to start uh, rendering an app. And everything starting from that point is a widget. A text is a widget. We will later look at other widgets on uh, more complex samples. Um, everything which is provided to Flutter is widgets and they are nested into each other. Um, and how to add interactivity uh, to these simple widgets nested into each other. That's the next point. We have Flutter sep highly separates into two major kinds of widgets, which is stateless and stateful widgets, you know, similar approaches from likely most other modern UI frameworks. Um, stateless widgets are immutable rendering objects. They are once created according to their parameters, um, once laid out, build, and that's it. And uh, they don't have own state, so nothing can change about them. It's only it's always the parenting element deciding on whether this is uh, part of the UI is supposed to change or not. And stateful widget is the exact opposite. It's a mutable, modifier, modifiable rendering object, um, which hence has control flow about anything it contains, uh, as that one decides whether. Uh, about its children, for example. Um, that one decides whether our back button is green, whether it's red, because that one is uh, has control logic and um, yeah, can trigger state changes. Um, <coughs> yeah, and unlike uh, it always consists of two parts, which is once uh, the surrounding class, so which represents the uh, element, so the widget, and once the state itself, the state is mutable, it can uh, trigger changes of the state and is always preserved across rendering, while the widget itself, um, the state is part of, is technically being rebuilt uh, on every build. <coughs> 
yeah, what makes me liking Flutter? Um, and what, why, how can we make it uh, performant? Because uh, one of my aims when doing mobile development is uh, don't exhaust resources. I know many people in IT environments have very powerful devices, but they always like to support uh, the, the most basic devices um, possible. So if we look at performance on Flutter, um, use stateless widgets wherever possible. If there's no need to have a state, if it's possible to inherit state, because uh, the less computations we do during build, uh, the more performant it gets. Um, when using stateful widgets, always try check whether uh, the parts of the widget we uh, want to rebuild actually rebuild. That's what we have, for example, the did update widget uh, method. Um, have dedicated controllers, uh, so try not to nest many stage into the states into each other, but try to uh, have a single controlling architecture that might be a pattern like block, uh, providing streams, that might be something like Hive, which is a database backend, that might be a simple stateful class uh, serving as controller for a particular part of the screen um, in order to always reduce uh, components having their own states in order to render more efficiently and use keys um, keys is a kind of it's a, it's a part of Flutter where you can, can simply pass over keys, which tells the rendering framework to uh, not rebuild uh, a widget as long as the key is uh, the same. So always use keys whenever possible if you want to prevent uh, parts of the UI from unnecessarily re-rendering. Now I was talking about rendering a lot. Let's get deeper into it. So uh, in order to get deeper into how rendering works in Flutter, uh, we need to have a look at of how Flutter is composed. And here we have a, a more or less visible graphic explaining how uh, the Flutter framework is built. Uh, at the top, we have the material and Cupertino libraries. Uh, if you have ever used uh, Flutter, you likely, or if you ever, ever did mobile development, you've heard about both. Cupertino is simply the UI style used by um, Apple. Material is the UI style uh, used by Google, because these are the most uh, popular um, mobile platforms to uh, develop for. These are kind of the top level rendering parts containing high level widgets um, with UI components used in these design uh, patterns. And all of them are, of course, was widgets and widgets itself are rendering objects and all this is part of the flutter frame framework under the rendering objects so there's lots of noise outside we have animation painting gestures of course well we need to capture gestures we need to cap capture a tap event uh, we need to capture uh, a mouse move um, and all this is um, shipped together in the dart framework uh, in the Flutter framework written in Dart um, as the Flutter foundation. All this makes uh, the framework served to what I as a developer see. And all this builds on the Flutter engine. The Flutter engine is uh, developed in C++, plus, plus uh, no, not, not the third plus in the language, but plus um, JavaScript um, for use of um, Flutter web, because while C++ Nowadays, it runs in web uh, using WebAssembly, but back in times Flutter Web was developed, that was not that stable yet. So we have an additional engine implementation in JavaScript, just to be mentioned, um, for Flutter Web. And the engine consists of Skia, of course, the Dart programming language, and everything which is text, because we need accessibility. Um, and in order to ha be accessible, the underlying operating system needs to know about what's on the screen for screen readers and so on. So that's why our text processing is part of the engine, which uh, uses operating system APIs. Yeah, Skia, maybe you know that one. It's a um, modern rendering library um, developed by a particular company uh, from the United States having a GS logo, um, also known as the same developers as Flutter. Yeah, and that's uh, basically the, the engine. So if we render something, uh, this is uh, the C G GPU um, task tree um, where the engine checks what to rebuild. Spoiler, Flutter tries to reduce, so the framework itself already tries to reduce uh, unnecessary builds and rendering uh, of parts of the screen as much as possible. Um, if we have, for example, imagine we have a button or spinner or something that's moving on the screen. So we have our empty amp, big white uh, scape and 
in the center there is this progress indicator, for example. So it's spinning around. Um, of course, we don't want to repaint the white area all the time. So the Flutter framework checks, okay, which, which parts did change? That's at the, uh, the part called animation. So um, when the GPU tells, uh, no, once the GPU tells us, okay, ready for the next uh, frame to be rendered, we check um, every vSync. The vSync is what the GPU provides into the Flutter, no, the GPU provides to the Flutter engine when it's ready to uh, render a new frame. Then the engine uh, is giving over a vSync indicator to widgets. Um, and according to this indicator, widgets can decide to rebuild once there was a new frame when it ready to be rendered by GPU. So in case we get that one, all animations, for example, the spinner going from uh, zero, position zero to position one and so on in order to move, uh, we move that one on. So animation is done. We know the new position of our spinner. Um, then we build the widget because now, well, we know the spinner is at position one, but what does it mean? We need to, uh, afterwards, we do the build. Um, the widgets are uh, indicate there's the build method in case you ever used Flutter before. Well, print, it's simply that one which is executed. Uh, so we build a new widget in order to um, have available what changes in the widget tree act we actually had after where, where it's on. That's the next stage. We have the layouting stage. Now that we know which widgets we have, we can now look at how to lay out them. Because, well, um, if you look at constrained boxes, um, sometimes widgets request more size, sometimes re widgets request less size, uh, sometimes we have re widgets requesting a particular size, sometimes they just tell us, oh, give me all the space we have. The layouting stages, which what's executed afterwards, to uh, keep uh, with the example of a spinner, um, nothing will change that much because the size of the spinner widget will be the same size, but in case it should um, change its size because we have a fancy spinner zooming in and zooming out, for example, then we would indicate uh, to, the, to the engine, okay, um, layouting change, we need a new uh, area, please assign us an area. And afterwards, once uh, the engine computed which part of, or which widget to um, render where, it's basically doing the paint. And then we're done and we're skipping over to the next reason and doing this again. So that was a very detailed explanation of how uh, GPU tick works with Flutter. Um, yeah, and what's the difference between stateful and stateless here? Um, yeah, a stateless widget simply has, has its constructor, it's once created and then built. When we have a new vSync, uh, unless uh, the constructor was modified, we don't build. But once the constructor was modified, we rebuild, independent, not checking anything, we just rebuild it. If the constructor changes, we rebuild it. Uh, that's a bit, um, yeah. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. Uh, stateful widget in opposite uh, is once created and uh, it's then given a state. It's creating a state and the state decides on everything else. Um, yeah, and what does it mean to have this state? That's this uh, graphic. Whoop. Um, we once initialize a state, uh, then we have a dirty build because we have a state that, that changed, but we did not build it into, uh, or we did not render it for the end users yet. Because that's why we, da we then try to build it, then our widget is clean. So then we're more or less done. Then a stateful widget, as that one is not, Im is, uh, not immutable, uh, it's a mutable thing. It could, for example, call a set state. For example, if we have a listener on some button and we tell it, okay, once I press it, the button should, should change its color, uh, this uh, tap event would trigger a set state. Uh, it changes its state, it uh, sets the variable color to uh, light pink, for example, then we have a pink button, but we did not render again. So we are in dirty state uh, again, uh, once up to the time the next vSync is provided by the GPU and we build again. Other um, option is we got, got a config update or an, a widget update. Uh, that's, for example, if the layout constraints surrounding the widgets changed. For example, if the neighboring widget just told me, oh, I now consume twice the size, we need to shrink our widget. That's nothing the widget itself decides. Uh, so there's also the did con update config handler. 
also the did update widget handler, which basically calls that one afterwards, also resulting in, okay, well, we did not change anything about our widget state, but the surrounding changed. So um, yeah, now you we have this and these and those constraints we need to rebuild. And the last uh, part of the widget life cycle is disposed. Once the Flutter engine decides, okay, this widget is now no longer used, uh, it's off the screen or whatever uh, the dispose method is called and uh, everything is uh, garbage collected. And for example, if you have streams listening to, you can dispose them too. Yeah. If we want to op still optimize the performance now that we know how, the, how this rendering works in particular, um, <coughs> We have, I already mentioned them, we have some key features. The mo most important key feature are keys. Um, keys prevent stateful widgets uh, from randomly rebuilding. Um, same for stateless widgets, but that's less relevant. Uh, for example, uh, if we have a list updated with, or if we have a list and we have a search bar in it. Now the search input changes. so. Of course, if we have a list containing 20 items and we look for item number five, we enter a five in the search bar and we get back to item five, then technically the library, the UI library, would no longer know, okay, which of these previous list ties um, has it been? Um, which part do I need to re-render? When we provided a key, hey, you are list tile number five, and once this key, list tile number five, is provided anywhere else, you know, you can reuse what you had uh, at the previous appearance of uh, key number five. So keys assign or to basically tell widgets, okay, you have previously been the last one having this key, and so we uh, prevent rebuilds and uh, so on, and that highly improves performance. Uh, yeah, especially this example is uh, when we search, it's usually a stream builder, and there we often have cases where um, we accidentally rebuild the entire UI because uh, we don't properly refactor already uh, rendered widgets. Especially useful, by the way, for animations because many high-level animations, uh, animation libraries um, rely on keys to be same or different, indicating on whether to rebuild animations or not, just as a note aside. And, um, well, let me grab some water. I was talking for too long. Flutter uses, um, or generally Dart uses, lots of streams. Um, we often build your eyes against streams. Streams may be provided by the, the state management, which might be block, that might be provided by the database solution, which might be, for example, Hive. We generally often build things against streams. So something changing and triggering UI rebuilds. Very common um, way of uh, Displaying stuff is we get a list of anything from some server, from some database backend, from whatsoever, and yeah, we want to list it. Uh, for, that might be a chat list, that might be whatever. The list of the upcoming talks, so we have our stream providing uh, the basically the rendering um, library. Uh, here, these are the items. Once an anything changes, rebuild. Please never do that. Um, if you have a list view, building against the stream, believe me, everything will rebuild once there's a new item in the stream, which is awful. Um, use keys, then uh, it only rebuilds the particular changing uh, parts of the list, or use animated uh, lists or animated sliver delegates, um, where you in don't indicate, okay, these are my new 100 items, where it was uh, 99 items b before, but it just indicate, you just indicate, okay, please insert that item at position number one which is obviously way more performant than rendering 100 items. Um, <coughs> animations, yeah. Um, how to animate, that's one of my uh, favorite topics about Flutter. Flutter is genius at um, animations. Uh, Often when we talk about uh, mobile development, we have animations indicating some things, indicating some uh, corporate identity of something, may it be the mascot jumping around or whatsoever. Um, most easiest way is, yeah, easiest way is always, yeah, we have our video or our GIF or our animated PNG and we just render it. That's awfully unperformant because uh, it does not sync with the V-Sync we talked about earlier. It simply tries to rebuild and that, that that's awful shit. Um, we can either use shaders native in Flutter. Shaders are pretty 
available, especially if you have more, more or less not jumping in figure, but more or less a background or something like that. Shader is way more efficient. Um, <coughs> use uh, animations package. Uh, there's a, a package uh, provided by the Dart language uh, called animations uh, that has high-level implementations of uh, many animations, uh, many common patterns of animations, which might be page transitions or whatsoever. Um, and again, use keys because animations are super heavy and we do not want to initialize and analyze the keyframes of our GIF if we need to render a GIF uh, every time we change anything on the screen. Also, um, especially as a hint, uh, as a replacement for GIFs, uh, just doing some basic animation, and there's a super, super fancy animation format uh, called Lottie, uh, doing high high level rendering. Uh, yeah, it's super efficient in Flutter. I recently had implemented it somewhere where it, I sometimes had 50, 60 Lottie animations running on the screen and it was still super performant and even not that powerful uh, devices. Now these following things only apply if you uh, deploy something for web. Uh, yeah, Flutter supports the preferred libraries. Uh, so uh, imagine if you compile your application with everything, all the logic you have in, um, well, First of all, it's just your executable, but we can defer it. Uh, deferred libraries is, are available in Dart since ages um, and enable you to split up uh, the compiled on the transpiled uh, JavaScript you get if you run it as a web application into several parts, compu uh, computing based on which parts are needed first. You can, could, for example, first uh, have your splash screen, then defer the most other parts of the animation, uh, not animation, sorry, the application. And yeah, that that's obviously way more. Uh, it reduces the initial load and um, increases uh, uh, the uh, initial uh, rendering. The first uh, colorful uh, paint you get if you lo only load uh, a few kilobytes instead of your five megabytes uh, over bloated web application because it contains that much stuff. Um, also, use browser optimized Canvas Kit. Um, Flutter renders in web using Canvas Kit, which is the web version of Skia. Um, since the recent release of uh, Canvas Kit, I forgot the version number, it was 0 0.30 something, um, they have browser optimized Canvas Kit. So they have dedicated versions compiled for Firefox and for Chromium because there are no, uh, no not many other browser engines left. Um, and by providing browser specifically uh, compiled versions of Canvas Kit, I don't know how, but they uh, reach at reducing the size of the Canvas Kit uh, library by uh, by several megabytes. Um, yeah, also a very um, it's unfortunately a very uncommon pattern in um, Dart web development is web workers. Web workers are always your solution gen in general in web development if you have heavy tasks to compute. JavaScript itself is simply not made for uh, computation and multi-threading. The only solution to do this are workers. Uh, especially web workers are useful in that case. There are also some other parts, of, uh, other types of uh, workers, but these ones are uh, the ones relevant if you have a heavy computation, because otherwise you will simply see your UI freezing. Um, in why you, for example, encrypt your five megabytes file it will slow down your application if you could encrypt your 200 megabytes file. Uh, well, the user might be a bit disturbed because uh, the web app won't render anything for the next five minutes. Um, <coughs> about storage. Flutter has super fancy storage solutions. And let me take one thing first. JSON is not a storage. Um, at least not if you want to process a bit more data than my preferences, whether I'm in light mode or in dark mode. JSON is not a storage. Let me present some um, nice flutter typic uh, storage solutions. The first one, the boring one, is SQLite. You know that one from anywhere. SQLite is a database solution. Uh, as SQL might indicate, it's SQL based. based. Um, it's very performant if we use it on I.O. platforms, so anything apart from web, because I don't know whether any one of you ever tried to use SQLite on the web. It works using WebAssembly, but please don't do it. Um, because it uh, tries to store stuff in IndexedDB, it should not store in IndexedDB. Uh, that's why um, SQLite is super e efficient and performant via foreign function interface 
says if we run, run a mobile application or a desktop application, but it's awful if we use it on the web. Um, two very uh, Flutter typic database solutions are Hive and ESA. By the way, written by the same uh, friendly person, uh, a developer from, from Munich. Um, Hive is more or less the Flutter native one, while ESA is the rusty one, and not rusty in uh, the um, meaning of old, but rusty in the meaning of it's written in Rust. Someone said, hey, let's rewrite Hive in Rust or something, I don't know. Um, yeah, about Hive, Hive is uh, a key value store, and it highly integrates into Flutter. Uh, it's listenable in UI, so you have a, a, a box storage boxes of Hive are value listenables you can listen on in UI. Uh, you have type adapters enabling you to store runtime op instances of your uh, dart code directly in the database, which is very convenient for um, developer experience especially. And well, with more developer experience, you hopefully also can create better user experience. Um, these are Aimed, uh, or is aiming to be a replacement for Hive because Hive uh, used to have um, performance issues in web that uh, became now way better. Um, but well, ESA project started way long a time before and has a bit different approach. It's, it's query based, um, written in Rust and law by foreign functions. Uh, it's since the backend is written in Rust, it's super performant, especially if we run on um, native platforms. So everything apart from web again. On web, it's also a pretty performant. It's uh, loaded by um, Wasm, and, but uh, if you process lots of data in web, um, it turns out it's a bit, bit less performant than Hive. So these, as ESA and Hive are the ways to go with uh, Flutter. Um, one thing to be mentioned, Hive is, uh, enables you to fully encrypt the database using uh, either predefined AES ciphers or fancy ciphers you may develop yourself. Please don't do that. Please use existing ciphers um, for some obvious reasons. And well, if you don't need a huge database to store your 500 megabytes of uh, user data, OK, we still have JSON. We have shared preferences. You can uh, drop your JSON in uh, in order to know whether the user wants light or dark mode. <coughs> yeah, now a bit uh, short overview about the ways of uh, animation we have uh, in Flutter. Yeah, first of all, the question, why, why should we animate? Uh, I was talking about animations a lot. Um, because I like animations. Why animations? Uh, here, okay, that's not the only reason I like animations. Here you saw some fancy videos which played very rapidly. Um, animations are useful for user experience in many ways. Um, let me try to, well, let me try to replay these videos. Uh, that can be, I clicked on the other one, but fine. Yeah, it can be used for user education. That's that one. Uh, for example, here we tap, uh, it does nothing. And instead of just doing nothing, it uh, we provide an animation telling the user, okay, this is what you should actually do. That's one way of animation. Um, the other way of animation might be that one. Um, we click on a message in a, a mail folder and it opens a pop-up and instead of just navigating to a new page, we transition the message into uh, the pop-up so that we know, okay, what we now see is the detailed view of this uh, message. Um, over there, you can see it. I don't think I need to replay it. It's uh, a loading spinner, also useful. Uh, show a loading spinner instead of a white screen that sh uh, tells the user, OK, something is happening. Please wait. Um, also, oh, last but not least, this one um, indicates success or failure. Um, if we start dragging this thing, we would, might like to know whether this is actually possible. And that's why in this example, the other cards move around in order to um, confirm the user, yeah, what the action you performed is um, possible, is uh, allowed in this case. <coughs> yeah, and all of this is super easily uh, doable with Flutter. I will show once, uh, I will for sure, short, I will um, show you the, oops, Flutter native, 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 uh, low-level way of animating, and then I will show you uh, the more convenient high-level animations. Um, implicit animation, that's what the, the uh, native, native, native Flutter way is called. So an animation 
wherever we do it is always consists of um, some progress value we have, um, some duration and some curve to animate against. Um, it might be a box resizing according to some predefined stuff. It might be a super complex uh, rabbit running around on the screen according to some uh, value we have. That would be pretty, pretty complex to animate, but it's possible. So using these three values in Flutter, we have, and anywhere actually, uh, we can perform super performant UI animations. Um, about curves, Flutter has uh, some no, not some, many uh, predefined curves, but also you can define any math mathematical function to use um, curves. This is a very short example of an uh, implicit animation. We only provide it a, a given value depending on some if statement, um, depending on whether whatsoever is currently selected or not. The width or the height should be 200 and 100. Um, we give it a duration. We give it a curve, and that's everything uh, it does. Flutter is very good at high-level way of animating. Um, once this uh, selected <coughs> variable changes from false to true, um, this container, it's an animated container, uh, the Flutter framework will render and animate uh, to the next uh, state. So Flutter is uh, very uh, user-friendly at this point. <coughs> Up. Sorry, screen is a bit small. Um, also, very common way of animating is using uh, animated builders. Uh, it's for more complex stuff like animating that other than animating just a box, but it's still super easy and convenient to use. <coughs> this is a very tiny sample of how an use of an animation controller and an animated builder might look like. We give uh, the animation we initialize an animation controller, give it a duration to animate, and here you see the vsync again, which we were talking about earlier. Um, the vsync is uh, used there to indicate the animation controller when to reanimate, when to trigger the next frame. And later we use this animation uh, controller um, <coughs> in an animated builder where we pass it a child, I will talk about that one later, and the builder. In the builder, uh, we use the value of the controller again and the child. And the child you see here is what we define here because I already told you, we always want to reduce rendering. And if we predefine a constant child, which does not change at any part of the animation, we can just provide this child. And instead of building everything again in this build method, we define the child here, it's passed to our build function later on, and the only thing rebuilding is that, in this, this case, uh, rotation transformation. And that saves us lots of GPU power because the child might be a, a super computation uh, intensive um, widget. No worries, we're almost done. <laughs> Um, last part of Flutter native animations to be mentioned are hero animations. In case you ever used Flutter, believe me, you already used it, but you did not know. Um, <coughs> heroes, uh, hero animations are given a tag and it's super fancy. We give a particular widget on the screen a tag. We navigate to a new screen. We provide the same tag to some other widget. And whatever widgets they are, they transform into each other, which is super um, fancy for screen uh, navigations, for example, where you have a button moving around, a small card being big uh, afterwards. It's uh, super convenient and it's the most low code way to uh, use animations because you only surround any widget by a hero widget give it a tag, for example, uh, my card, and then some counter. Um, and we do not need to modify anything else. We don't have a controller we need to start. We don't need to listen to some vsync. Flutter Engine does it. How does it uh, look like? Um, very easy. Here we have uh, a container containing uh, whatsoever uh, with, the with the hero tag set. Afterwards, on uh, the next page, we navigate to, we have some other uh, thing uh, surrounded by a hero tag, and it will magically animate uh, into each other. <coughs> um, 
if you are not motivated to implement animations on your own, there's the, the animations uh, package, which provides high-level implementations of uh, all the fancy animations, transitions you might use. Um, I won't get into details, I will just uh, show the samples. Um, this is one, you have container transformations where uh, things might uh, transform into uh, other shapes, especially open, there's the open container uh, class here. Um, the next type of animation provided there is access transition. You often have uh, cases where you, where you transition on accesses, um, for example, during a login process, during a stepper or something like that. Um, yeah, these are super common animation samples and they are provided as a high level implementation over there. And now let's talk about performance once again. Um, I used to sample around. Um, I was doing some animations in um, Flutter and React Native. Um, that was still back in times where Flare was uh, more popular than Lottie in Flutter. Yeah, some basic scrolling uh, Flutter does at 60 FPS if your device is 60 FPS, believe me. Uh, Flutter is super performant at uh, scrolling, um, because it, mostly because of its uh, super interesting list view <coughs> um, widget. I would likely go deeper into that, but that would uh, not fit into uh, 45 minutes. Um, yeah, it consumes less RAM and less CPU when scrolling around the list view than, for example, if we have the same uh, in React Native. If we uh, use a flare animation, okay, that was two years ago, um, Flutter is super unperformant um, because there it was rendering, it was directly using rendering objects instead of widgets, which shows as one of the huge disadvantages of Flutter. Um, it's not meant for 3D stuff. It's not meant for GL stuff. It's mostly meant for applications displaying stuff and not for, for example, games and stuff. Um, so there, Flutter is way less efficient. But if you look at Flutter native animations, they're super performant. Um, the sample I had here was a screen with uh, 10,000 GIFs being rendered on a grid. And uh, a uh, basically, uh, some user input was given to uh, the device it was rendered on where it was scrolling around. And that resulted in React Native to seven frames per second. And Flutter was still doing <coughs> Uh, almost 20 frames per second. Um, it had a higher CPU load, but uh, almost a third of the RAM React Native was consuming. And that shows that Flutter is pretty efficient at its rendering. One very important thing to still be mentioned at the end, I don't want to uh, 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 give you uh, too much of uh, enthusiasm, uh, Flutter the bad and the ugly. <coughs> Flutter itself is open source. It's uh, um, framework license in mid, under mid license uh, developed by Google. I already mentioned that one, <coughs> but try to build it yourself and fail. Um, the build of the Flutter framework itself, unfortunately, relies on um, blobs falling out of Chromium CI. Um, that's a bit. Mm. If we download the Flutter uh, frame <coughs> framework, for example, it does not even include the uh, engine, but by default downloads the engine from the uh, Chromium CI, and we can technically not know whether that's actually what's compiled out of the source code of Flutter. Also, we can compile the Flutter engine on our own, no problem, but still it downloads all its dependency as blobs from the Chromium CI, and you don't know what. Um, that's also, by the way, the reason why Flutter has not been ported to other platforms. Google does not want uh, it to be ported to because you always need pre-compiled <coughs> blobs um, from the Chromium CI. That's for, uh, the main reason why Flutter was not ported to FreeBSD yet, for example. There were many developers aiming to do that, but uh, bo uh, Flat the Flutter engine does not allow you to compile it if Google does not want it. And that's, sorry, that, that's shit for an open open source project. <coughs> yeah. Also, um, there used to be privacy regressions, and there still are privacy regressions. Um, let me explain them. Yeah. Good. Flutter often connects to Google Fonts. Why? It sounds very evil. It is evil, but let me explain it in a way I can understand it as web dev. And not because Google Fonts are easy to use, but Flutter renders in Canvas Kit. CanvasKit uses WebGL. 
And WebGL cannot access the fallback fonts of your operating system. And Flutter's uh, way to do that was, okay, if we have, for example, that's often common if you have um, foreign symbols or emojis, um, if they are not available in the fonts bundled with your Flutter application, um, the Flutter engine decides to connect to Google Fonts and to download some Noto fonts. That's a very evil pattern because it's nowhere documented. Um, we were recently stumbling about that around, over that one at work uh, and found as a privacy regression, it was super hard to work around um, because Google does, or well, Flutter does not intend users to prevent you from that. It simply connects to Google Fonts. It's hard coded, it downloads these font files. <coughs> um, unless you override them by providing a font with exactly that name, whatever it contains. Um, just as a hint, if you want to prevent it from that. It's a bit weird. Um, <laughs> the second uh, huge privacy regression, especially in past, was Flutter experimented with the fiat libraries uh, on mobile platforms uh, too, also known as split APKs if we talk about uh, Android. And instead of using an open source implementation of it, it was simply shipping uh, <clears throat> the Google Service Framework implementation of uh, APK split up without telling anyone. We had huge problems with apps included into F-Droid um, because on a sudden they included some proprietary <coughs> Google stuff and we did not even know from where. It took us some time to investigate uh, where it came from. We could work around it, but uh, also mm, that's the evil part about Flutter. It's a Google project and use it with, ca with caution. Yeah, um, that's it as of now. Um, time for questions. Uh, thank you for your great talk about Flutter and how to use it. Um, we have about 15 minutes left for questions. If you want to ask a question, just put your hand in the air. Hello. Ah. Oh. Okay. Thank you for your great talk first. It was a lot of information. <laughs> um, so I uh, took some notes and I have to process that later. <laughs> um, it was very interesting. And at the end, the one with the ugly uh, is just like a real downer. And also it sounds like, can you actually use your applications offline? Because if it loads your fonts... Um, yeah. Uh, I mentioned it's only if you use Canvas Kit, and that only applies if you deploy it as a web app. And only if you use Canvas Kit as render in the web app. Flutter uh, has uh, contains two ways of rendering in the web, which is the basic HTML renderer. That one has huge issues with performance if you do animations, because HTML is not meant for animations. And complex rendering like shadows, um, dropouts, and so on, they are a bit buggy on HTML because HTML is not meant for that. Uh, Therefore, OpenGL is used on high-end devices, and there it only fallbacks on these. Otherwise, you, if you uh, prevent from that and you don't have a font shipping, for example, um, a new Unicode 15 emoji, uh, you will simply see the common square of, hey, I don't know what glyph it is. So it's not a, it does not prevent you from deploying offline. Uh, also, you can work around this uh, by simply bundling the uh, Noto color emoji compact font, and then you're gone. <coughs> Are there any other questions? Hi, interesting talk. If Flutter renders using WebGL on Canvas, how does it deal with accessibility, for example, screen readers and stuff? It's, yeah, it's super interesting. Um, it uses uh, WebGL and Canvas Kit uh, when rendering on web. Also, again, we are only talking about web, um, but it deploys everything as HTML element too. Everything which is relevant for screen readers or has area tags 
set and all pre-built widgets in the Flutter have ARIA text set or at least ARIA representations translated into HTML ARIA text are rendered at exactly their position in background uh, overlaid by the WebGL as uh, text or whatever it is to in order to have accessibility um, with screen readers. That's again this part. Let me scroll to this that slide. Um, here. Um, text is part of the Flutter engine. Everything which is text is not processed in uh, Dart as high-level part, but as low-level uh, component of the app uh, integrated into the native platform. In web, that means it's rendered as regular span, as regular paragraph element. Uh, in Android, it means your screen reader will read it out. Um, if you use this, I uh, forgot how it's called, this thingy where you tell your screen um, where to tap on, it recognizes all the stuff because it's rendered as native text uh, provided to the operating system. <coughs> Are there any other questions? Okay, so um, that means if I want to use Flutter, there's only one implementation by Google. There are no different implementations of the same framework by other vendors. No, Flutter is a framework developed by Google um, as much as uh, React Native has only React Native. Uh, there's one implementation for Flutter. There's also only one single runtime implementation for Dart, at least yet. Um, but yes, you're, bun you're uh, exposed to whatever Google uh, developers of the open source, open source project Flutter um, does with Flutter. Okay, and how stable is it? I mean, Google may change it at any time, so... Google uses Flutter in their uh, own projects at many places, um, so might be a cut off because their entire uh, Google advertisement, uh, everything which is UI around Google advertisements is uh, written in Flutter, so that would be a huge cut off for Google itself, believe me. <laughs> and yeah, Flutter is stable, absolutely. Uh, you you mentioned it uh, it downloads dependencies uh, from Google during build. Uh, if Google ever drops this project in five years, can you still deploy uh, and change uh, old projects? Uh, no, it does not download anything during build. No way. It downloads uh, blobs from the Chromium CI if you build the engine. And as an end user, you would actually never download the engine. Um, the engine is uh, shipped with your installation of Flutter locally and then used to build uh, the applications. Um, and yes, if you install Flutter, it's more it's basically a shell script you download and it installs stuff. But once it's installed, you can use it as long as you want. Um, and it's only a complaint about the build process, how to build the Flutter as the project itself, not an application with Flutter. That one does not connect uh, to more servers th than any other mobile application kit where you download your applications, uh, your dependencies from NPM or whatever. Of course, it downloads dependencies, but only those you want, and you can provide anything locally too. It's only about when you want to build the Flutter engine itself, then it relies on this awful Chromium CI. Other further questions? Uh, if there's no questions left, thank you for your great talk. And um, I think you can go and grab food in about an hour.